Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters. And today we've got a little special treat for you. A little uh, news nugget, I guess you could say. Uh, a bit more of a rumor going around that, uh, you know, doesn't have anything too official. But uh, there are some people out there in the, uh, you know, Hollywood sphere, uh, reporters, leakers, things like that, uh, saying that there's a pretty good chance that uh, we got some Texas Chainsaw news going around. And uh, yeah, I, I thought this was quite interesting. I sent it over to Luke. Uh, he thought it was interesting. And well, we decided let's talk about it. And uh, yeah, to kind of dive right into things, uh, this again is just a rumor. So take this with a massive grain of salt. We don't know if this is fully what's going on with this franchise or if this is even going to progress into anything more. But again, I just thought that it was so intriguing. It got my blood so boiled at some point that I was just like, we got to talk about this. And basically, Cinestealth on Twitter, are uh, they kind of broke this news from what I understand. I, I listened to uh, 3C's video coverage on this the other day. And uh, he pointed us to this source, so I went and looked into it, and I sent it to Luke. And uh, they're basically saying that uh, Sony, who you know recently was in the news talking about how they're doing a reboot to "I Know What You Did Last Summer," well, they and this didn't even cross my mind when this all happened. But over the summer, uh, Legendary Pictures uh, went over to Sony. They've left Warner Brothers, and Legendary Pictures owns the rights to, of course the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. And as to where Legendary and Warner Brothers with their deal, they were uh, cool with making that last reboot that we got of this of this film series and then carting it off to Netflix. And Netflix was like, well, let's just do a few more of these. We enjoyed that. I'm sure they got a massive spike in numbers uh, for what I thought was a pretty subpar film. Luke, what are your thoughts on the most recent Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Oh boy, I did not like it. Um, I don't. I think subpar would be a stretch. Uh, to be honest, that one was just. Um, you know, I, I think this this franchise here, it's such a legendary first film. You know, that mm -hmm. initial the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and then, in my opinion, followed up by a lot of things that never really hit. It's like one of those franchises where we hope for the best, but we never get the best. You know, so it's like. Even going into this, uh, the 22 uh, film, it, you know, you're still hoping to get something good. And, you know, I, I think we're all kind of going in there with a lot of hesitation. At least I know I was. And um, it was proven correct. You know, by the end of that film, I, I, there were a few chuckles for me in that film. Um, so this is like one of those franchises where you're just hoping they can get back on track uh, with something. And this is like, you know, you pointed out the news, brought it to me, and it's like, well, yeah, this is just a rumor, but this is something where, like, this franchise here has just been, from from my perspective, knocked down in the dirt so, so much time and time again that it's like, I think this is a worthy discussion. Yeah, and that rumor is, to kind of get to the long and short of it, is that, uh, you know, they're working on that with Legendary going over to Sony they now have the rights. Sony has the rights to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. And instead of continuing off of the Netflix reboot that we got last year, they are again talking about rebooting the franchise. And that is just, I don't even know. Like, I, I just, every time I think about it, I'm just like, is this a good idea? I don't think so. Because, like, we have done nothing but reboot this franchise for the last 10 years. Uh, Cause like, what was that? Uh, Texas Chainsaw was in 2013. Yeah, I believe so, so. Every subsequent film after that has been a reboot. And so that would be, we've had Texas Chainsaw, which came out 2013, I believe. And then we had Leatherface, which was straight to DVD, uh, which was again, another prequel, but rebooting the series to kind of get it back to its roots, supposedly. And then this last one that we just had was again, another reboot where they're like, we're going back, just the first one is continuity, we're giving it the old uh, Halloween 2018 treatment. And it's just frustrating, because you're right, the first film, the bones of this franchise are very strong. I absolutely adore that first film, I know you do as well. We covered it for our Thanksgiving special, it was kind of one of our, our big Thanksgiving podcasts, where we were like, let's talk Texas Chainsaw, Crazy Families, you know, that whole nine yards. And, uh, you know, 
we adore it. And I, I think that you saying that everything after it is just kind of meh or give or take, it really depends on the person is totally accurate. I get that 100%. Like, I really enjoy Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, but not everybody does. And not everybody has to. Uh, I really enjoy the prequel, or not the prequel, the first remake that they did, which if you want to go back even further, we haven't had an actual sequel since 2000, what, three? 2000 when was that 2006 i don't know beginning yeah i think it was early around there 2000s yeah so it's one of those things where it's like we really haven't had an installment that wasn't a reboot or like a prequel in almost two decades by this point yeah. that's insane and it's just like when are we just gonna take leatherface out of that like cycle this constant revolving door of let's reboot it Let's reboot it. Let's take a prequel. Let's reboot it and just throw him into a scenario and say, fuck the continuity. Let's just give him a good Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Yeah. And and that's where, like, for me, this is the most intriguing where it's like, you know, you look at your Friday 13th and so you look at your Nightmare on, Nightmare on Elm Streets and Halloween's. And yes, that those first films are always iconic. But then, you know, we had our discussion on Friday 13th and which one was our favorite in those fall into the sequels and then you have dream warriors for nightmare on elm street and then there are some halloween sequels that a lot of people enjoy uh texas chainsaw massacre honestly after the first one i feel like they never really got it right uh from kind of capturing that tone of the first one and i feel like honestly it's the easiest one to really get right because you don't have a lot of continuity that you have to process um and and play ball with whereas uh, you know some of the other um main slashers you really you know for better or worse, they kind of paint themselves in a corner and you kind of have to work around story-wise. Where it's like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, after that in first initial film, um, that tone and kind of getting those circumstances uh, all in line, I think sh should have been way easier for, for the most part to kind of take that franchise and get more hits than misses. But again, from time and time again, we can't get this one down. And then it's like, okay... We're going to do a sequel. Nope, we're going to do a reboot. Nope, we're doing a remake. And now we're back to reboots. And it's just like, um, at some point, you know, I think the audience just taps out and says, no more, please. It's like, uh, maybe let this one rest for a while. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one, they always dust off that chainsaw and they get it revving again. And it's like, nope, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And it never hits. And again, like you said, for the past 10 years, we've been subjected to these reboots. And they always get more of it wrong than right. And there's always continuity issues. There's always illogical things going on. And, you know, it's them saying, oh, Sony has an interest in you know rebooting this is just something that is like, I, I think we talked about it um, during our the podcast where it was like, I think you brought up Ty West. And, you know, oh, yeah. after after looking at X, it's like, if we can get something like that, um, that'd be perfect. And it's like something like X honestly could live in the space of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And like, those are the types of films I think we should have gotten after the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but we never really got there. Yeah. Almost doing it. And again, we're going to throw this word out here, but I don't know if you're pitching it like this, but almost like an anthology yes. of where it's yep. like, you know, That's we just, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a series of murders going over different decades. And, uh, you know, this is how we handle it. I like that idea. I know a lot of people would miss Leatherface. I think that he's too big of an icon. It's kind of like taking Michael Myers out of the Halloween series. They tried it at three and people didn't like it, even though that movie is phenomenal. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, I think you had to wait for the audience to get bored of it. And I think maybe they are now. Maybe we can step away from Leatherface. But I feel like that's been the holdback is that nobody wants to remove Leatherface entirely. You know, another one is Motel Hell. Uh, from what I understand, that'd be a great Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, you know, kind of film in that area. You know, like if I was to do this, uh, you know, again, I'm not saying that I have anything more original and I'm not going to sit here and do a full blown pitch. But it's like I like where their head has been at in the sense of just like, let's get it, you know, back to the roots. We don't have to try to follow up the continuity of all these other sequels. Like I always like that approach. I know you are more of like you want to try to connect everything that's worthy of connecting yeah. and try to try to keep that tissue moving. I am still in the approach of like, if we can keep it pure and you have a good story, 
that just connects from that first film. We can do that, but they've really proven time and time again with this franchise that they just don't know what to do with Leatherface and his family. Like the, the last film we're led to believe that he just walked off to an orphanage and he's been living there for the last, like, you know, 40 years. And then that's where he's been. And then he's going back to his house at the end. Spoilers. Sorry if you haven't seen it, uh, but you've had a year and uh, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, it's just, it's not that hard. I don't think it really isn't like if I was to do this, I would just say, pick up the next day, pick up with another group of people, like maybe a family, like a legit family with kids and stuff. Uh, you know, they drive by and they see the, the, the fucking uh, hitchhiker all mowed down and the police are around it. And then, you know, they're stopping to take a piss and then there's Leatherface, you know, and now he's chasing this family and you just make it nonstop. Like that, I think is some of the best stuff in the original is just he comes at you like full force out of nowhere and then you just have to deal with that situation and i think that that's where a lot of the horror comes from with leatherface and the fact that they are always trying to just throw more and more contrived lore on top of him it just doesn't work yeah and and that's where it's like yeah i'm a fan of kind of you know if you're looking at a franchise uh that had many sequels in the 80s and you're coming back you know in current time and disregarding it i'm not a big fan of that um i like to try to get those workarounds try to include everything but i think texas chainsaw massacre is probably the exception to that rule where it's like everything after hasn't really hit and it's like you know those ones I can get completely discarded and I don't think I would throw a fit of trying to not connect that lore because like how you're saying, they try to throw more and more connective tissue on top of Leatherface and none of it makes any sense. And like you're saying, dealing with the situation, uh, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre with Leatherface chasing uh, whatever character with a chainsaw and just hearing the revving up and just the... Uh, the terror that is, you know, the imagery of him just running behind you, this big hulking man with with a chainsaw is terrifying enough where um, all you need is, again, just that little bit of story and then focus on the situation. You create that dread in, in the actual film itself and you have a killer Texas Chainsaw Massacre and they can't seem to get it. They keep wanting to throw more and more on the Leatherface and his family to try and be like, oh yeah, you know, we got to add this, we got to add that. And it's like, no, we don't need all this stuff. So it's like, you know, hearing that we're going to reboot it um, after all these reboots, um, I, I don't know if we need that right now, where it's like, you might want to let this one just die for a minute. And then eventually we can dust it off and see what's left. But this is one of those reboot after reboot after reboot me as a Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan, am exhausted. I understand that I am too, and you know this is one of those rare franchises where, even though I am a defender of the sequel, I do not consider Texas Chainsaw Two as like my head canon of the official Leatherface story. I always just see the first film like how you know for me I would say Halloween and Halloween Two. You know, I love those. I think that those are the official Michael Myers story. But like, you know, and Friday the 13th, you probably go all the you go all the way up to like six. And it's like, that's all canon to me. Um, but like with this, it's like it's always just the first one. Yeah. I love two because it's it's goofy and it's fun and it's different. And it's one of these weird zany sequels that just works for me. And we're going to get into that, you know, just hold tight. You know, we got to wait a few months, but we'll get there. Uh, but you know, everything else after that, I don't really care about, you know, like the, the remake I enjoy, I enjoy the remake for what it is. It's a, it's a modernization. I love Arlie Ermey. I think that that's fun. I think that and the prequel are great self-contained, you know, that's what it yeah. is, but I don't, I, it, that's what this franchise is. It's just, this is self-contained Two is self-contained. That is self-contained. I can't sit here and say that the rest of it's really worth tying together. Because it's all just so all over the place and just different. And they, they never really understood the essence of uh, Leatherface and just what made that character impactful from the first film. And I just don't think they've ever really been able to capture that. And, you know, you did bring up Ty West with X. And I think that he did a phenomenal job of capturing that 70s tone 
to where it's like, yeah, I'd love to see him tackle this material. There's a lot of people I'd honestly like to see tackle this material. But I just think that what they've been doing, like we've been saying, this reboot after reboot, this revolving door, it's done nothing but just put this franchise into the grave. And I agree with you. We need to close the coffin on Leatherface and just keep going. Like, let's keep supporting the original indie horror that we've been getting. We've had a lot yeah. of great movies over the last year. We got a lot of great stuff coming up this year that we're excited to see. And, you know, as of the time of this recording, you know, we got Malum coming out right around the corner. Uh, you know, with that's that's an original concept that's almost honestly a remake of a movie that someone already did that I'm very intrigued to see. So it's like we've got that. We've got great franchises like Evil Dead Rise, which have been consistent, where it's mm -hmm. like the Evil Dead franchise doesn't have a bad film in it. So it's like Let's focus more on that and let's just let Leatherface go for like, give him five years, five years, no movie, and then we can come back to it and let's see. Because, yeah, I just think that if this one comes out and sucks, it's like, to what end? To what end are we going to do with this Texas Chainsaw franchise? Because like the second you do let it come back, it's like, it's just going to be diminishing returns until you just yes. let it go. Yeah, because uh, honestly, like, you know, I wasn't against um, that, that remake. And it's like, if you want to modernize it, I totally understand that. But since we've had that one, I don't think it really, um, you know, warrants a, a remake of the original in 2023, you know, at all. So it's like, you know, we're going to be doing sequels, reboots, whatever. And it's like, you know, for the past 10 years, anything that they've they've come out with is either offensively bad or completely forgettable. And it's like, that's not a great track record. So it's like, yes, let's let Leatherface lie for a long while here. Focus on some other unique horror properties uh, coming out and then, you know, see what's left in the tank in five to ten years. And then maybe we'll be ready to see Leatherface back on screen. I agree. But alrighty, guys, I think that's going to wrap us up here for this little news nugget here. This is just, again, a rumor. So take it with a heavy grain of salt. Um, you know, I can't fault Sony for, you know, having this property now and being like, well, shit, why don't we give it our own spin? And if they do and they knock it out of the park, we'll be the first people on here saying, hey, this is fucking great. This is what we want. But I think that this is literally the definition of an abusive relationship when it comes to a horror franchise. You know, we like to fuck around and say, you know, things like, oh, they bastardized Halloween with the last three. Even those, I, I guess with the exception of ends, uh, you know, had some redeeming qualities, but these last couple Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies have just been really, really poor outings in our opinion. So, you know, that's just our thoughts. And hey, if you like those movies, again, I'm not sitting here saying you're wrong. Everybody is entitled to their opinion. That's the beauty of this community and these movies and film opinion in general. So tell us, why do you like this? Is there a specific storyline you want them to pick up from? Is there a remake you'd like them to go for? Like, if you're like, man, I'm dying for that Leatherface sequel. Where's my Leatherface sequel? Well, it's called Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But you know what I'm saying. So let's uh, let's talk about it in the comments. Let us know what you guys think. What's the best direction? Do you have a pitch? Feel free to type it out. I'll read it. Luke will read it. We'll have fun with it. <laughs> but uh, other than that, guys, we've got a lot of great stuff coming to the channel. So please hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're on our way to a thousand subscribers, still making good traction. Uh, we got a lot of great stuff on the horizon, some good uh, content coming up as far as uh, new reviews and other things. We are trying to get our hands on a couple of interesting pieces. So uh, hopefully that goes well for us. And uh, yeah, other than that, uh, I'm Dylan Newell. And I'm Luke Janesco. And remember, stay scared. Hey.